an increasing number of mobile operators are migrating to standalone or SA 5G core platforms in order to unleash the full potential of their next generation networks. So what are the main considerations for those operators right now? Well, I'm talking today with Chandresh Ruparel, director of the 5G wireless core infrastructure segment at Intel about this important topic. So Chandresh, how is Intel working with the industry to get 5G core SA platforms deployed? Um, first of all, thanks Ray for having me. Um, Intel led a broad industry transition to NFV um, in partnership with leading carriers and, and ecosystem partners. Um, and today, if you, if you look at the results, uh, as per the latest Del Oro report, we are way past the crossover point and expecting almost 80% adoption of NFV worldwide in the infrastructure by 2024. That's a significant achievement. Uh, in the same manner, we are making substantial investment to make sure that this transition to 5G SA for the carriers is, is smooth and successful. We are doing this by directly collaborating with carriers so we understand their concerns and their challenges. Uh, in fact, we have uh, collaborations with uh, pretty much all of the major um, uh, carriers worldwide. Uh, and a good example of um, uh, a publicly available success uh, right is is uh, the work that we did with uh, SK Telecom to implement uh, URLLC, the ultra reliable low latency communication. Um, and that resulted in 78% improvement in, in latency, 88% improvement in jitter, some phenomenal um, uh, improvements that, uh, that ultimately uh, is going into deployment. Uh, secondly, um, we, uh, we are uh, a leading provider of silicon and platform technologies into the 5G core. So we are learning and addressing challenges as the carriers deploy 5G SA worldwide. It also allows us the benefit of anticipating the challenges that are on the horizon or coming up uh, as the infrastructure evolves for the carriers. And we are ensuring that um, uh, these challenges are addressed through product innovation and investment in ecosystem so that these capabilities, technologies are translating quickly into mature commercial products. And what are the trends and challenges as CSPs transition from 4G to 5G standalone? So this particular inflection point for the comms industry is especially challenging because there are multiple transitions happening at the same time. You see cloud ready to cloud native uh, transition. Uh, you see um, uh, we are going from a single vendor proprietary uh, core uh, to a multi-vendor 5G service-based architecture, uh, going from a single cloud to multi-cloud environment, from a highly centralized core to a core uh, with uh, distributed edge. Um, and, and again, the, the higher level of distribution makes it again very challenging. And in the midst of all these transitions, carriers are looking at how do we get um, cycle over cycle improvements and significant ones in total cost of ownership how do we drive ease of deployment, interoperability, automation, and agility in the network? And how is Intel addressing these challenges? It's not just important to deliver the technologies to the plat at the platform level, and I may have repeated it a few times, I guess, but, but this is a very important aspect. It has to meet uh, workload level performance, and in particular, the key performance indicators that the carriers are looking for. So Intel works on real world workloads and ecosystem partners and with ecosystem partners to ensure that uh, we are developing optimizations and best practices that apply uh, to ultimately what's going to be commercially available uh, to the carriers. And these optimizations are with due consideration to real deployment environment of the carriers, which means 
taking into account the throughput requirements on a per location basis, the space constraints, the features that are necessary to deliver the, deliver the solution, uh, the rec level architecture, and multiple other considerations that make this uh, really effective in, in understanding how, how it benefits the KPIs and the total cost of ownership for the carriers. Um, our investment in cloud native, which is a, a very important aspect of this multidimensional transition for the carriers, um, is, is also uh, a, a multidimensional investment from Intel side. Um, we invest uh, heavily into industry initiatives and open source communities to, to deliver uh, and, and improve areas such as um, security, observability, packet processing, and automation. Uh, we have investments in plugins, uh, Kubernetes operator extensions, uh, in um, dynamic and automated workload placements, uh, in end-to-end -end reference architectures that, uh, that cover a broad set of use cases and deployment scenarios, and, and multiple other assets that uh, drive ease of deployment. Our focus is that uh, the, the cloud native implementation and the security framework uh, uh, for the solution is consistent uh, across uh, edge, core, and cloud, uh, so that uh, carriers have the ability to bring the best solutions into their infrastructure without having to worry about, uh, you know, a lot of aspects related to um, uh, interoperability, support, etc. Now, you, you mentioned security there, and the industry is experiencing a growing number of security threats. What are the main security considerations for the CSPs, and how is Intel addressing those challenges? As, as carriers move from 4G to 5G, uh, you are talking about implementation of a cloud-native environment uh, you have a service-based 5G architecture uh, on a single service-based interface. You have multiple, you know, all the core network functions now connected. Uh, you're talking about a highly distributed infrastructure that is uh, with elements going into non-secure environments. So the concern for security is pivotal uh, for the carriers. Uh, just look at the number of cyber attacks the frequency has increased, the impact has increased. Um, you just need to look at you know, today's newsfeed and, and you will see something about cyber attack. Uh, so the carriers are no more immune with you know, single vendor core, proprietary interfaces, perimeter security is not sufficient. Every element in the network needs to be its own security device. Uh, any single, any uh, you know, uh, a single network function hacked can expose the entire core. The next you have to look at, you know, what are the use cases uh, that the carriers have to address uh, given, given the security exposure. So you have, uh, you know, key management as a, as a critical use case, uh, private key protection, uh, because again, this, the, the entire infrastructure gets exposed if the private key is compromised. Uh, you, you need trusted execution environment for use cases such as lawful intercept, uh, billing audits, uh, data security, uh, not just data privacy, but also data security. And this has to have, and this, this needs to be both uh, across uh, at rest, in flight, uh, and in use. So data, uh, has to be secured uh, doing all, uh, all of these three conditions. Um, Intel has invested into security technologies for the longest time. Uh, we have the cap you know, all the capabilities needed to create a comprehensive and consistent security framework across edge core and cloud. Uh, we address uh, uh, key management capability, for example, uh, with technologies like Intel Software Guard extension. Uh, we have a security that um, uh, capabilities such as uh, 
uh, crypto and hash algorithm acceleration that allows every element in the network to be a security device uh, and, and consistently. And, and we haven't developed these technologies just yesterday. This have been around for a while. Uh, they have matured by working with partners and end users. For example, Intel Security Guard extension has been around since 2015, uh, has been uh, not only not only that we have worked and matured the technology, but it's been deployed already uh, with end users. Uh, so when, when you look at the, uh, one more consideration when you talk about security is also that it needs to be an integral part of both software and hardware. You cannot leave loopholes uh, that you have exposure on application or OS, etc. Uh, again, the sensitivity to this topic is, is extremely high, uh, and, and Intel has, a, uh, has the capabilities to deliver a comprehensive and consistent framework. How important is the broader industry ecosystem to 5G core SA developments, and how is Intel working with its partners to maximize the potential for mobile operators? Uh, it's a great question. I, um, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, capabilities at the platform level um, uh, don't really help until they translate not only into mature and commercial products from the ecosystem partners, but also address the key performance indicators uh, and the challenges that the carriers um, uh, need to deliver against. Um, we take this extremely seriously. Uh, we already have significant investment because you cannot achieve this unless you already have uh, uh, major investment and partnerships in place. Uh, we have deep and broad partnerships across the industry. Uh, we work very closely uh, with the ecosystem partners in uh, optimizations, in joint ISV certification programs, in ensuring that uh, the, we are helping faster adoption of the technologies uh, that are coming up. And uh, very importantly, we have invested in tens of proof of concepts um, across NFE, cloud native, and 5G uh, to ensure that uh, these capabilities, as they are optimized and matured, are really delivering to the carrier requirements. In fact, a great example is our collaboration with HPE. Uh, I can proudly say that um, uh, HPE platforms uh, are already in trial with uh, for 5G, uh, 5G SA core um, with our latest third generation Xeon SP processors that were launched just in April. Now, this is in record time. Um, and uh, and, and the GreenLake uh, uh, cloud services, uh, uh, we believe, uh, is, in, in, is in a great position uh, with the right platform infrastructure uh, to address the cloud native uh, requirements as well as the agility that the carriers are looking for. Okay, so lots of industry collaboration going on there to help the mobile operators. Chandrash, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thanks very much for joining us and sharing your insights. Thank you.